what I want to talk about today is not just one little thing, one little component of riding an avalanche train. There's a whole lot of other stuff, and a big part of that is knowing when it's safe and when it's not, when it's a green light and when it's a red light. But we're all human, we make mistakes, and so the key thing is to be ready in case we do make a mistake and misjudge whether or not that slope is safe or not to get on. And I just want to talk a little bit about how, I'm going to reference a little bit how your riding skills playing into that and being there to be there for your partner. So why are we in this room? It's not to talk about avalanches, right? It's this. It's the horsepower. It's the powder. It's getting out with our friends. The avalanche is just getting in the way of that. Yeah. So <laughs> we just want to do what I want. What I want to talk about today is just making a few small changes. And so, I mean, I don't know about you. Love the sleds, but there's just something about a bike. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. It's got a track and one or two skis and a motor. It's good. <laughs> but really, this is not what we want to talk about. This is an accident that happened the day after Thanksgiving in 2014. Someone died. He was buried right there in that hole. Because this is what matters. This is my four-year-old son. I want to come home to him. And our friends, this is what matters. Because really, this is what makes a good day of riding. It's not just the powder. It's our good friends, and that's what makes it fun, getting out and riding with them. So when we talk about avalanches, there's no worry right here, is there? No concern. Out in the flats, in these meadows, up there in that bowl, in those big, dark, shady, steep slopes, that's where we start talking about avalanches. We're parked here on a day like this, looking out there, just drooling, right? Like I said, some days it's a red light, some days it's a green light. I'm not really going to go into that in this talk. But the way we approach it is the key thing, because there's something lurking out there, sometimes. And that's these bad dudes. <laughs> you want to steer clear of these guys as much as you can. Sometimes they're out there, sometimes they're not. They're here right here. This was in 2009 in January, Hook City. My friend Travis died there. He was parked, well, his wife and his best friends were parked off to the side. He rode up near the top. He got stuck right up here near the top. He was trying to free a sled. And it, it got away from him, it started rolling downhill, and when it hit a thin spot in the snowpack, the whole slope broke. It broke about 10 to 15 feet deep where he was sitting. And I'll never forget, the next day I went there, we went to help with the recovery, and the first thing we did was we went to the hotel and we met his wife Kelly. And she had been through the worst night of her life, sitting in the hotel room, knowing her husband was out there buried in the snow. We gave her a hug, we talked to her for a while and said we're going to go get him. And she went back in the room and closed the door, and the thing I'll never forget the guy I was working at the time turned to me and he said, Mark, never, you can never let that happen to Amy. And I'll never forget that. I think about that every time I go riding. Never let that happen to Amy. And I ride a little bit differently. Because this is out there. Or maybe these smaller ones. Or maybe something really small on this small terrain. It's not big and scary. But it's easy to be riding in here lose track of your partners, for them to lose track of you, and if you come through here and get buried, you're in trouble. A small terrain like this, it's easy just to run through without thinking about where your partners are. Little avalanche, what do these guys do when they're worried about the Taliban out there? Do they just all in a group of four run out on an open slope? They take turns, they train, they're fit, and they cross it one at a time. Because the first guy goes out there and everyone else covers him. And when he gets to the other side of the slope, or the open area, what does he do? Does he keep going? He turns around and he looks and 
covers his partners as they come back. And we're going to do the same thing in Avalanche Train, just in case those bad dudes are out there lurking around. And it doesn't take much. A few small things is all it takes. So this is in the LaSalle Mountains near Moab. Eric Trimbeth is our forecaster, and he's there digging in the layers in the snow. And we were going to go up, and there are already a few tracks there. We were going to add a whole lot more. <laughs> so that's the point, right? So he was just digging, looking at the layers. So instead of parking right next to him, right under him, all I had to do was just come over just a little bit where I took this photo. And now I'm totally safe. So if anything happens to him, I'm ready to go. I'm right there. I'm covering him. This was an accident that happened actually the same day Travis died, 2009 in the gravity range. Kirk Hewitt died on this small little avalanche. What happened is he came in here, and we're not totally sure what happened, but he probably was just going to turn up that slope or just loop around those trees and he got caught in the slide. He had an airbag, he didn't deploy it. For whatever reason, didn't have time, he was trying to just ride out of that avalanche. He was with a group of 15 that day. The trouble is, the moment of the avalanche, he had ridden away from the group. So he was basically by himself. Last year, Evelyn Lees and I, she's one of our forecasters here in Utah, we went back and looked at a lot of these accidents. And what we realized is that in a lot of these cases, even though people had partners and they were in the group, at the moment of the avalanche, they were effectively alone. They might as well have left the truck by themselves that day. When we went back and looked at all the data, we kind of classified it according to this. If you were basically alone, if your partner was out of sight, how often does that happen? Come on, I better see all the hands up for that, right? <laughs> he's got that loud can, I think he's over there. <laughs> Partner's too far away. Maybe they don't even know the avalanche happened. And the other one is when your partner gets caught in the avalanche too. They're no good. They can't do anything for you if they're buried. So we went back and looked at all the accident data, and what we found was that in the last nine winters, almost half of the people dying in avalanches were either by themselves or effectively solo because their partners were too far away. Almost half. And that's nuts because everything we do, it doesn't matter if it's snowmobiling, skiing, scuba diving, hunting, the most fundamental thing we do is go to partner because they're the ones who are going to get our butt home if anything happens. So almost half of the avalanche fatalities wasn't someone there to do a rescue. That gear is useless. It's your partner who's going to save your life. In real numbers, these were 233 deaths. 130 of them, now they had a partner. And that person did the best they could get that person out. They had a shot, they had a chance. Things just didn't work out for whatever reason. But that means 103, that 44%, 103, we'll never know. They might have been saved. All it might have taken was their partner being there. So here's a, let's just put this in real terms. I want to look at a, a video clip here and really paint it, paint out what it looks like this is a video from an avalanche that happened last winter up near Afton, Wyoming. These guys were great. They posted this video on YouTube. You might have seen it. And uh, they put some lessons on there that are really great to read. There was a comment down below on the YouTube channel that was interesting to read. But I just want to focus on one small part at the beginning. So I've kind of chopped it up a little bit. And uh, let's just, uh, just play it.
not get caught. Okay, right here, see that line in the snow? Boom, that's the avalanche. Now the entire bowl all the way to the other side is, is come loose. They're lucky it didn't break too deep. It also stayed connected just long enough for him to hit the throttle, hang on, and get out of it. If it had broken a little deeper, he might not have been so lucky. All the way up to their left, it's all avalanche. Now his partner's getting caught too. Who knows where the other people in the group are. Buried for just a second. We're okay. We're okay. Well, there's the squad. There it is right there. All the way up to the cliff. And here I am. Oh. He's feeling pretty lucky, huh? Yeah. The girl likes to go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Luck and hope is not a good risk management strategy. So, chopped it up and replayed it just, replay it just a little bit. And I want you to think about what could you do? You're in that fire team. The Taliban is out there. What can you do just a little bit differently so that you can cover your partner as you head out? Notice right at the start, the guy in front snaps his head back and looks. See if uh, the guy with the GoPro is following him. Okay. How about right now? I think somewhere in here you're thinking, oh, these guys are out. Let's stop right here, maybe. Let him go ahead. Now, look right here. See that line in the snow going up and down hill? That's the avalanche breaking. Across that line. Side of the red line. Just wait for a second. There it is, right there. All the way up to the cliff. And here I am. Oh. So they got lucky. They've been buried. It's hard to say how that would have panned out. So all I'm talking about is just stop for one second. You gotta put your sled wherever you need to, wherever you want to. Park it in that spot so you can cover your partner. If you're right here, Michael. <laughs> Where do you go? Where do you stop? Where do you cover your partners? Where's the Taliban? The trouble is that in that video, that line is obvious. That's where the avalanche broke, we can see it. But when we look out here, we see your tracks. That line is invisible. There it is. As soon as he crossed that line, they were both out there. Both out there. Now they can't cover each other. The only way you know where that line is, is by knowing slope angles. So if a slope is less than 30 degrees in steepness, you're not going to get an avalanche. There's only one way to figure that out. You can measure those slope angles. If you do it enough, you can build that in and you can see it. But it takes a lot of work to see it, to know where that line is. Here's an example of an avalanche. I was up, uh, I was up near Pinedale 
with a bunch of engineers and test riders from Polaris, and we were doing a level one avalanche class. It was our first day out, we were just kind of sussing out the terrain, and we came in over there on the right side of the screen, you can see all those snowmobiles, they're kind of dark. We pulled into this clearing and stopped right there. And we were looking up at that slope above, the avalanche wasn't there. Talking about where we could park, if someone wanted to climb that, where would you park to watch them? <coughs> and actually there were a few sleds, there's ski tips right on that red line. A buddy of mine pulls out in front of us, makes a few turns downhill, and right when he got to that red X, boom, the whole thing ripped. We start screaming, he looks up, he sees it coming, he hits the throttle and gets out of the way, luckily. But, if he had been caught and buried, he'd have been the only one, and we were all sitting there ready to respond and go dig him out. You can easily imagine a different scenario where we're all ripping around on that slope and it breaks, and now all of a sudden, Few people are caught, we don't know who's caught, who's missing, who's not missing, because we were all right there. It could have worked out just fine. Luckily, he was able to get away from it. But that gets a lot harder to do when you get into more technical terrain. When you're boondocking through the trees, if you're like me when I try and keep up with some of my friends, you're just barely hanging on. <laughs> you got that thing pinned. <laughs> But if you cross that invisible line, you want to make sure your buddies are watching you. And that's the hard part, is you gotta move through that terrain, you gotta put that sled where you need it. As you're moving through these trees, to be able to stop, let your buddy go ahead, and then hopefully, how often have you had the, your, your partner just keep going and disappear? <laughs> hey, I'll be all right, don't worry about me. <laughs> it definitely gets harder. It's easier in some of the big bowls and things like that, like in that photo I showed in, up in Wyoming. As you get into here, it definitely gets harder. So that's my challenge to you, is match your riding skills with the terrain, do what you can to bring them up to speed, be able to park that sled in a good position where you can watch your friends. And the whole goal is to make sure if the worst case scenario happens, you know where your partner is, you know if they're an avalanche train, and then you know where to stop and where to go. I think I skipped through this photo earlier, but this is a photo of an actual avalanche uh, in Montana. Another person died in this avalanche. This person lived because the airbag was sticking on the snow. Just a little bit. What if they'd been just a couple inches deeper? If they had an airbag, it wouldn't matter. But if the partners have been watching, they could have found it. So, there's a, this happened last year, there's a, some handles on a snow bike right there. So the whole goal is to be able to take a situation like this, and turn it into this. The only way you can do that is if you're that fire team, and you're able to stop, cover your friends as they cross, cross that open train, they cross that line and down that train. So, Anyway, the whole goal is to get out, get in the snow, get into this, and rip some powder. That's the talk. <laughs>